Good evening, everyone, and welcome in the today's session. Today we will discuss about Google Cloud Career Fair. Uh, most of you might have heard about this Google Cloud Career Fair if you have connected with our GDSC or our YouTube channels. So today we will discuss how you can apply for uh, cloud domain jobs and uh, what Google Cloud offers you in the providing jobs, right? So basically the Google Cloud not only provides you free training, but yearly it organizes a fair. And in this fair, you can apply for Google Cloud jobs, right? So for the today's session, we have Abhishek Sharma, sir. He is currently the senior cloud engineer at the Sears. And he has been the Google Cloud Arcade facilitator for a couple of years. And after that, he also the cloud innovator. Right. So he will guide you how you can participate in the Google Cloud Career Fair. What are the initial requirements to apply in the career fair and how your application and resumes are judged. Right. So uh, it does not simply mean if you apply in the career fair, you get selected rights. You have to design the resume. You have to build your LinkedIn profile. You have to participate in events that are organized by the Google Cloud. So all these things we will cover in the today's meeting, right? So uh, let's welcome Abhishek Sharma, sir. Sir. Yeah. Hey, hi, everyone. Thanks, Dhru, for the brief introduction about me. So. Without any delay, uh, how many of you guys are aware of this particular thing? I think most of you doesn't know about this. So don't worry, we will take it from very scratch. Also, we will see how uh, you can plan for next year's uh, Google Cloud Career Fair. So don't worry if you are a fresher or doesn't know about these things. So without any delay, I think we can start. Okay, so let me start from here. Okay. So before moving forward, as Dhru already discussed about my introduction, so I'm uh, Abhishek Sharma, currently working as a senior cloud engineer at Sears, which is Google Cloud premier partner. So we more work on Google Cloud and its relevant technologies. I am also a Google Cloud champions innovator in hybrid or multi-cloud space. So I more uh, work on Anthos and its projects so that we can set up a multi-cloud environment in the cloud. Also, I am a Google Cloud mentor, a blogger, and your friendly neighborhood teacher in one of the YouTube channel that is Guys in the Cloud. So we more uh, create uh, tech uh, tech tutorials, we can say, where we will teach different different technologies in Hindi language mostly. So if you want to connect with me, you can just scan this code and uh, you can connect with me via LinkedIn. So let's discuss about the agenda. What are the things we are going to discuss in this particular session? So first we'll see what is Google Cloud Career Fair, how you can leverage this particular event uh, so that your profile gets stand out and how you get any opportunity in the field of cloud. So we'll discuss all these things. Then after we'll see how you can tune your resume so that your resume will be shortlisted for different opportunities. It is not specific to Google Cloud Career Fair. It is for any opportunity. So there are lots of uh, folks are over there who face this kind of issue that we are applying for tens of hundreds of thousands of uh, companies, right? So there are, but their resumes are not getting sorted because for each and every opportunity, there are lots of applicants over there. So it's very hard to uh, interview everyone and then after shortlist a specific set of people and uh, get them a chance so that they can get the opportunity. So in this section, we will discuss how you can tune your resume so that your resume will stand out and uh, you will get at least interview calls so that you can showcase your skill set. And then after, whenever you get into any interview, how you tackle the interview, which type of questions you can expect, what will be the expectation from the interviewers and, and how you meet those inter uh, expectations. So we'll discuss all these things in this particular interview section. And then after we'll have a live Q&A in which I will answer some of your questions, how to prepare and how to get into these things. So before any delay, let's discuss uh, Google Cloud Career Fair and introduction.
So basically, Google Cloud Career Fair is the program from official Google Cloud, who gives you an opportunity to interact, to interview with an potential interviewer. So there are lots of companies who are already working in Google Cloud and its related technologies. So Google Cloud is trying to uh, create some kind of communication between both of them. You guys who are learning about Google Cloud from different different programs. and there are some potential employers who are working on google cloud so that they can uh, get some quality talent from these programs so this program will help you direct interview opportunity with potential employers also it will give you addition value to your dedication in different google cloud programs so, so the way we are doing google cloud arcade facilitator program we are doing 30 days of google cloud program we are doing google cloud career readiness there are lots of programs which will give you a hands on learning experience of google cloud in different different aspects so if you are doing those programs honestly and learning about those things next step is how to utilize those learning in a real world right so this program will give you that particular opportunity as your dedication towards those programs and then after you will get a network opportunity with your peers who are already uh, part of these programs also you can interact with googler so that they, you can understand that how they are thinking about uh, google clouds growth and how you can contribute to the, those sections and the main important thing is this is totally free so you don't have to pay anything you just uh, showcase your dedication and uh, you are good to go with this career fair so before moving forward let's go to the official page of google cloud career fair and let's see how it looks like so this is the official page of google cloud career fair if you see here currently registration is closed for this year but if you are a uh, you are in college so any time you can apply uh, after this particular session finishes or if you are part of different different programs from google cloud like readiness program 30 days of google cloud so you will get a personalized invitation for this particular program where you can just apply employer will uh, choose you as a potential candidate and then after you go to bangalore or some other places whenever there is a career fair and you will get a upper interview opportunity so if you see here uh, for this year it is scheduled for 9 december uh, from 8 am in bangalore so our interest is how you will select you will be selected for this particular program so this is the important thing so if you see here there are two sections one is it is mandatory you should have um, being part of different different google cloud programs which will finally redirect you to this particular certification so if you are part of career readiness program 30 days of google cloud program if you have successfully completed that particular program you will get a structured path for this particular certification in which they will provide you some learning resources and some labs using cloud skill boost platform and then after finally you appear for this particular certification this is globally recognized certification so if you have this particular certification in your resume it will add more value to your or if you are part of some kind of cloud boot camps from official google cloud then also you will get uh, the private invitation to these programs so there are two ways you can uh, be selected for this particular uh, program so these are some of the details that uh, what to prepare how to prepare how your linkedin profile looks like and other details and this is the timelines our main interest uh section will be this party participating employers like who are the companies who are coming to this particular career fair to provide some kind of opportunity it is very important to you uh, important that you should have uh, some kind of understanding that uh, whatever companies for which i am going on right that particular company or organization is working on that ki uh, what kind of stack if i go there what kind of technologies uh, i got some opportunity to work on so all these things you should know uh, so let's click on this page and let's see who are the companies who are already uh, 
trying to get some participants from this particular event. So if you see here, currently we have 2023 participating employers in which these are some of the company. And I highly recommend uh, these companies are already working on Google Cloud and its relevant technology. And you are also interested in those things. Then all these company will be the ideal place for you. So I highly suggest just go through the uh, profile pages of these companies and see what technological advancements they are adding to the industry using Google Cloud and its relevant technologies. And last year, we have more set of people, set of organizations who are uh, participated in this particular. And this will come every year, right? So make sure that you are familiar with these companies, right? So that your chances to get an opportunity will increase. So this is the high level overview of the uh, website. So let's get back to the presentation and uh, let's see this particular slide. So you already see that there, uh, there, are, uh, there, there will be one uh, prerequisite requirement mentioned in that particular page that you should have a Google Cloud Certified Associate Cloud Engineer certification in your resume. Then it will be a more chances that you will get the private invite for that particular career fair. So to get certification, right? If you are part of different programs, you will get this particular path in which you will get one specialization course uh, from Coursera that is architecting with Google Compute Engine specialization. This is a, a structured uh, course prepared by Googlers itself uh, to prepare you for this particular certification. Also, it uh, contains some quick lab labs so that you will get a hands-on experience, whatever you learn. And then after at the end, you will get certified and earn this particular batch. But if you are part of this particular program, you will get a 50% voucher for this certification. This is paid one, okay? So whenever you want to appear for this certification, you have to pay. But if you are part of different programs, then you will get mostly sometime 100% discount voucher or sometime 50% discount vouchers. So just make sure be participated in these uh, program so that you will get uh, hands-on learning experience as well as voucher for this certification. And if you have this certification in your resume, it is a very uh, highly recommended add-on to your resume. And people will chances to uh, chances for your resume shortlisting will increase if you have this. Now let's discuss about uh, tuning your resume for shortlisting. So there are thousands of resume for a specific opportunity. How you will make sure that your resume will stand out. Your resume will be highlighted uh, in front of HR so that she, he or she will select your resume. So what happens normally if you see anyone's resume, these three things, sections will be mandatory and each and every person have, have the same thing. So first they have some education and basic details in which they provide uh, I am from this particular college, I have this much of pointer, and I am from this particular domain of engineering or some other courses, right? And then after, this is mandatory that you should have associate cloud engineer certification, that it will be, I'm assuming that if you are appearing for career fair, or if you are planning to appear for career fair, then you should have this particular certification. And then after you should have, or you will be having some kind of relevant Google Cloud or any specific technology stack projects, either Node.js or some other things, and relevant skill set based on requirement from the employer. So, so let's suppose if somebody wants cloud engineer, right? So they uh, want a person who is having skills on these, these, these technologies. So they will mention all those things in their job description page. You should have those skill set in your resume so that it will having a better chances to get certified. But from my end, I would suggest these two things you should have in your resume so that your resume will stand out apart from whatever we discussed in the previous slide. So first thing that you should create a project which will solve a real world use case. It's not like uh, creating a virtual machine. So I just uh, gone through one of the quick lab labs and I have learned about how to create a VM. 
and just add it as a project in your room in my resume it will not work you should have some kind of project which will solve a real world use case let's suppose how to host a end to end website with all security with all uh, high availability configurations and all so that kind of project everyone wants in everyone look for actually so whenever a employer see your resume or hr sees your resume so they are more interested in your projects and if you have created some kind of projects which is solving a real world use case and uh, following some of the best practices which will be leveraged by different organizations in the industry then your chances to be selected will be increases okay and second thing is you should have some kind of quality documentations for your projects so let's suppose if you have created some project okay and uh, it is solving a real world use case but there are lots of components you have utilized for each and every use case so let's assume i am hosting a website in google cloud okay so what i um, what i have done i have created some vms on top of manage instance group on top of that i have leverage uh, some load balancer after that for the security i have used cloud dns for ssl enforcement so there are lots of services lots of uh, google cloud services i leverage to create that particular project so in my mind i know that this particular service i have used for this particular purpose but whenever you get into any organization or in the industry you need to make sure that whatever you are doing your client will also know the same thing so by the end of the project you will do some kind of knowledge transfer or handover kind of thing so it's a very good practice that whatever you are doing you can able to write it so the and it will also help you to showcase your learnings uh, to the wider range so let's suppose you are not appearing for google cloud career fair currently but some of the organization who are not part of this fair are interested in uh like hiring someone who is having some skill set uh who is having some kind of skill set in google cloud and it's relevant commonly used services like vms cloud sql instance load balancer and all so if you have created some project leveraging the same kind of services and you have just write about a blog write about it in a blog right and you just publish it into the linkedin and inside linkedin everyone can see your blog right and suddenly some hr sees your profile and sees that hey uh, you have already working or learning in that particular technology stack which we require so they will directly ping you that hey we want someone who is having experience or who is learning about these thing so if you are interested we can hire you so writing blogs publishing it into social media platforms creating videos so that it will demonstrate your in depth knowledge it's not like i am just doing the things i am writing the things i am sharing it with others so that everyone gets to know that yes you know this particular technology so it's very important that you should do these kind of thing and for writing blogs i have something called google cloud community medium publication which is officially from google cloud and let's see what they do actually so i am just sharing my another tab so if you see here this is the google cloud official uh, publication who publishes different different use cases related to google cloud and its related technology and uh, people who are working on this particular technology stack how they are solving different use cases so that you will also get some idea about your next project so if you see your multi language libraries and sample for gen ai in vitex maybe this could be your next project for your college right so and also if you build something using the same kind of stack you can just publish your uh, blog in this particular medium publication so that everyone around the world can able to see that particular uh, what we can say whatever blog you have created and they also know that hey you are also working in this particular technology so this will help you uh, like make your visibility around the globe and someone who is already working on this part or interested in hiring someone who is already uh, having some kind of experience with this 
this kind of activity, this kind of actions will help you stand out. So this is very important that you should do these kind of activities. Okay. Now let's get into the interview tips part. Now you are prepared. Your resume looks good. You know what is career fair and you are selected for career fair. But whenever you get in front of any interviewer, right? What are the things you should be careful about, right? So let's see. First thing is you should make sure that you will have a full understanding of things done in mentioned project. So let's suppose there are lots of folks who just copy and paste the things from YouTube and put it in their resume. This is very common thing. And I'm, I just wanted to being honest with you guys. But whenever they appear for any interview, they are like, uh, we don't know why we use this particular service. We don't know how these two services are integrated with each other. So this kind of scenario should not be tolerated in front of the interviewer. So just make sure whatever projects you have done honestly, just uh, put all those uh, projects. And then after, it is very important that you can able to showcase yourself as a passionate learner. because as a fresher, as a uh, like college student, no one will expect you that you are, you should be expertise in a specific technology stack. They just want that you should have some kind of basic understanding. Your fundamental should be clear. And then after, whenever you get into any organization, you can easily able to adopt the nature of the organization and uh, learn the things and easily can able to customize it and uh, develop it into the client's environment. So you should showcase yourself as a passionate learner. And then after knowing about applied company is always an add-on. You should know about like in which particular technology stack they are working on. If some organization who are already uh, Google Cloud partners, so most probably they are working on Google Clouds and it relevant technologies maybe in different clouds as well. So knowing about any organization is an add-on. So whenever you are appearing for any interview, just make sure you are going through their official page. And then after, as I already mentioned that, it is very important that you should have a strong fundamentals. Uh, no problem if you can't able to answer any question, okay? But don't bluff, okay? It is very important. Sometimes what happen if I ask something, right? People are like, um, uh, they just try to find out a relevant topic and they just say, and that was honestly very irrelevant to that particular specific question. Right. So if you don't know about anything, just say, uh, sir, I don't know about this particular technology stack currently, but, uh, as I am interested in this particular domain, I can easily learn and can able to implement as I am a fast learner, we can say. So these are the some of the tips and tricks, right, which you can follow in front of the interviewer. Okay, so that most probably you will get succeeded. Okay, so let's start the uh, Q&A part. But before moving to the Q&A part, we already collected some of the questions uh, from you guys. So let's answer those questions first and then we'll start. So first question is this type of question interviews asked specifically in the cloud. Field. So most of the folks are very uh, like concerned about this particular point that I am appearing for a cloud interview. In software, they will ask DSA or something like that. Right? Or if you are appearing for data analytics, so they will ask related to that particular technology. But in cloud, there are lots of things, right? There are different, different domains like DevOps, cloud infrastructure. There are automation engineers also, CICD engineers also over there. So there are lots of domains. So if I am appearing for any interview, which kind of questions I can expect, right? So from an interviewer prospect, for uh, he has tens of candidates, right? For the interview. So what mostly we do, uh, they do actually, they see your resume and see the skill sets, see the projects. So most of the questions you can expect from your projects itself. So if you have created some good level of projects, so they will ask you some normal term terminologies like uh, uh, 
uh, how you integrated these two services why you have used this kind of architecture so like there are serverless architecture microservices these buzzing words i think you every one of you heard about so they can ask questions related to this and also they will ask you some common questions related to cloud fields like basic fundamental terminologies what is i availability what is disaster recovery so these are some of the fundamentals you should know right uh, and you can expect these kind of questions in the interview after that how to prepare for next year's google cloud career fair so basically i think most of you are already in uh, your initial college days in first year second year as per <laughs> uh, message from <laughs> organizers right so you can target for next year's google cloud career fair if you are not eligible for this time right so for that what you can do you can just uh, be participated in different different gds events like 30 days of google cloud study jams and all so that you will get that career path opportunity for career readiness program in which you will get one specialization course in coursera some hands on lab for cloud skill boost and then after uh, some certification voucher so that you can uh, Uh, appear for that particular exam and be certified and being a, uh, being a certified certified folk will be the must criteria right so just make sure that you are being participated in these programs so that you will get this particular opportunity for the next year also i would suggest whatever you are learning right just make sure that you are not not just doing the copy paste things i know like most of us are already uh, being part of uh, these arcade program or career readiness program or these kind of programs right in which you have to do the uh, labs on the batches so this is not a bad thing but make sure that what, whenever you are doing any lab at least you know about 5% or 10% of that particular at least okay because most of the labs Uh, i saw that are really high level okay but no worry if you follow those steps step by step right you will get a full understanding that what is the purpose of this particular lab what it is doing what particular uh, real world use case it is solving so that at least you know that if i am having this kind of use case these are the services i can leverage just go to the lab see the architecture learn the uh, like read about the documentations and just go and implement it at least you should know that in the industry how those services are being leveraged so these are the fundamental things you can follow so that you can plan for google uh, next year's google cloud career fair so yeah these are the some of the questions which we got commonly so let's uh get into live q and a and if you have something or uh, if you have something in your mind that uh i am having this kind of scenario how i prepare and whatever you have you can ask Okay. first question we have from shubham is what type of projects we have to make specially so basically shubham as i have already mentioned you should create a project which will solve a real world use case so let's suppose as a beginner you don't know anything we have to start from very zero okay then you just get into this kind of programs and you started uh, learning about what is cloud what are the services it provides so start from that particular point and then see um, maybe there are some of the labs which will give uh, give you a hands on experience on how to create a vm so suppose the way you have your vm your local laptop machine in your local uh, like environment in the same manner first learn about this particular thing that how you you can leverage that particular uh, service vm offering in the cloud so that you can able to create the same kind of laptop 
inside the cloud and you can access that particular laptop from anywhere of the world right and then after what you can do you can just try to create uh, some website on top of that the way you create in your local the simple html css page right and then after what you can do you can host that particular html css code using some kind of web servers like nginx or something it's just a command ept get install nginx and just put your code in a specific folder structure you are good to go okay and that after you will see that uh you can able to access that website from the external ip address of the vm so this is the simplest project you can start with and then after as soon as you get into different different services just start advancing your project on those uh like services so let's suppose now after some time you learn about some of the containerization technology which is currently very booming so if you if you have covered heard about this particular term called microservice architecture right so these are the services we have uh which is very commonly used in current era so you can just learn about docker kubernetes so you can able to leverage these technologies so as a beginner i would suggest let's go and create some simple simple projects which is uh, already mentioned in the google cloud uh, cloud skill boost platform just go and search for that particular use case that how to create how to host a website in your local so you have prepared your portfolio site right you just go and uh, search about it you will get a hands on lab just in place of their code use your code that is the only difference otherwise uh, uh whatever configurations settings you want you can able to modify but that will be a uh, standard one based on best practices so you can leverage that uh also if you want to uh, learn about more about this particular thing that what to create what are the projects you can create you can see our last uh, uh live video in which we have mentioned some of the good level of projects but make sure whatever you are building that is solving some real world use cases maybe uh, your college official website you are just creating your uh, college website or you are uh, building something or some application which is handling uh, student information data right so you can build uh, something like that just integrate some ci cd uh, integrate some security practices like ssl no one wants to access these websites right with the ip address so how to enforce so whatever projects you are building right just make sure that is solving some real world use cases and uh, for project you can just go and search for some basic projects right hosting a website something like that. okay let's go to the next question is certification exam is easy or hard i am a beginner i want to contribute to google cloud and want to pass the exam any tips for me so basically uh, rajan a certification is a good level of exam okay it's not easy it's not too hard if you are having some good level of understanding in google cloud and its relevant technologies like uh, uh, we have already mentioned a structured path you can just follow that particular path you will get a full understanding of different services how they offer and what kind of service we can leverage for a specific use case okay so just follow that particular path you will get a full understanding and in the exam what you get you will get some real world uh, scenario based questions so let's suppose uh, you have asked that right, uh, like you are a cloud engineer of xyz company and your company is going to uh, Uh, launch a specific application which is having these requirements then can you suggest some of the services which we can leverage so if you are aware of uh, in google cloud platform how many services we have and from those services which particular service we can use for which particular scenario then you can easily able to crack those questions you can easily easily able to answer those questions so just try to structure your learning so whenever i suggest someone that hey in this way you can prepare for a certification then we uh, then i always tell them that every cloud provider is having 
they are five fundamental pillars okay so uh, whenever you go and learn about any cloud technology you will see they will offer you five fundamental things one is compute second one is storage they will provide you computational power they will provide you storage they will provide you some kind of monitoring and logging solutions also they will provide you some networking resources also they will provide you some ai ml based or big database services so that you can leverage uh, these technologies easily into their your application you don't have to build these things from very scratch so let's suppose in my application i want to uh, fetch a data from a specific web page or from a specific uh, pdf then i don't have to uh, write a code which will do this particular thing we already have one api called vision api you can just integrate that api inside your application it can able to do that particular thing okay so just structure your learning in this five fundamental pillars and learn about each and every fundamental pillar in depth so let's suppose in the compute we have five services in google cloud Com uh, vm instances cloud run cloud functions app engine google kubernetes engine so just learn about these five services and learn that in which particular scenario we can use these five services so that whenever someone ask you hey my application is having this kind of requirement then you can directly say that based on best practices this particular service is specific for this kind of application so you can directly go and use it so in this way just learn and make sure that you are learning about best practices uh very honestly okay because in the exam you will expect questions real real world questions only not apart from like it's a straight forward question that hey uh, how uh, like which particular service we can use for creating a virtual machines this kind of questions you will not get you will get a real world scenario based question okay okay next is hope uh this will clear your uh, doubt okay what is devops how to contribute in it so basically devops is some kind of practice it uh, this is some kind of methodology in which you will enforce or you will uh, like you will put a practice into your organization so that they can uh, seamlessly uh start from your application development to the production and to the uh, so that they can seamlessly uh, like what we can say uh, seamlessly serve the end user so let's suppose if you have implemented a methodology of devops in which there are lots of concepts comes like agile uh, there are some ci cd concepts so there are tons of tools available which will help you enforce the devops in your organization so what it does actually it will streamline the process from the development to the production so that in a very seamless manner you can able to serve your application to the end user so whenever there is a user right uh, whenever there is a application developer who develops any application this application should easily goes to the end user so that they can leverage so in the entire flow entire process there are lots of processes comes into the picture like whenever he pushes any code you should need you should make sure that that particular code will having some kind of uh, security enablement and then after whenever this code uh, goes to the uh, different environment it should be tested it should have some kind of security practices in it it's it can able to handle the traffic it can it doesn't have some kind of errors or issues or security threats so in the entire flow from the development to the production you will have different different phases in which you will do the testing you will do the integration you will do the load testing and after that you will uh, give it to the end user via deployment in the production so in the devops it is defined that you will practice those methodologies so that you can seamlessly take your application from the developer and provide it to the end user and to contribute in the devops field i highly suggest there are some commonly used tools like jenkins 
uh, Ansible, Infrastructure as Code, Terraform. So you can just learn about these tools, which is commonly used by different different organizations, and this will help you get into this particular domain. Okay. Next question. Hope uh, Jitendri, you are clear, right? Now, next question, Dhruv, Dhruva. Okay, how can I build a good LinkedIn profile? So, it is not rocket science. Okay, so whatever you do, right? Just try to showcase yourself that these are the things I am learning, and uh, try try to sell yourself in the LinkedIn. Actually, so basically, whenever you do anything, let's like suppose I am building a project. Just try to showcase that project. Uh, write about it, write blogs and paste it into the LinkedIn social media so that your profile gets more uh, stronger. And for the decent profile, there are some prerequisites. So let's suppose if you are giving a title, there should be a decent profile page, a profile image. <laughs> there are lots of folks who put uh, some selfie kind of images. So people will really don't like, okay, just make a decent profile pay, uh, profile image. Uh, write about it that I am a student, I am an intern in this particular organization, a good title, which will showcase your skill set. Maybe if you are working on Google Cloud, working on DevOps, Jenkins, Terraform, Kubernetes, then just showcase those things. And whatever uh, positions you are working on, so let's suppose you are a chair, uh, chairman of your uh, local IEEE page or if you are a lead of your GDSC, right? then just add a tagline for that inside your uh, LinkedIn profile. And then after, write a decent about me, which will showcase you, uh, showcase your skill set with some level of expertise in a specific domain. And then after whatever certification you do, just add it over there. And yeah, this will be uh, a decent profile. Okay. Now, okay, next question. Thanks, Ubom, for the feedback. Okay, Deepa, is the Coursera course free or we have to purchase it? It's very, it's totally free. You don't have to pay anything for that. So this is advantage for all of us, right? We don't have to pay anything you will get a learning opportunity free of cost. And then after you will get a job opportunity at free of cost. So both of them are very free of cost. Okay. You don't have to pay anything. Mm, do we get internship opportunity in this career fair? So basically case of you have to check the employer's uh, site and uh, potential, what we can say job profiles they are offering in this particular career fair. So basically, they are assuming that you guys are already in your college days, right? So most probably for uh, initial six month or three month, you will get an opportunity as an intern. And then after you become a full-time employee. So this kind of scenario may be happen over there. You will uh, don't get an opportunity directly as a full-time employee. You will get first six month of internship, most probably. And then after you will become a full-time employee. Okay, next is what are the prerequisites to get a data analyst, analyst entry level job in Google? I am mostly at the end of completing Google Cloud Provider Analyst course by Coursera. Please suggest. Okay, so Duli Pala, you can do one thing you can just go to the uh, Google's career page in which there is a profile called data analyst in Google. You can just see the description page, and this is very common for all the job profiles, what you can do if you are interested in becoming a DevOps engineer, if you are interested in becoming a cloud engineer or some other job profiles, what you can do, you can just go to the uh, organization's uh, career page and see the description part page of that particular job profile. And you will see, the all, you will see all the details, like uh, we want a person uh, of a person with knowledge in this 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 particular technology stack for this particular profile so that if you don't know about any specific skill set for that particular role you can just go and learn and then apply so i highly suggest uh Dulipala, you can just go and see the career page of 
data analyst analyst for google okay can you show that preparation path again okay so basically deepa uh, uh we will send you that link in which we have defined the full preparation path but for the high level uh follow this particular uh path we can say first you should know about what are the offerings a specific cloud provides so they mostly provides in five fundamental way first one is a uh, compute so the way you use your local laptop right in the same manner in google uh, in any of the cloud platform they have variety of services right so you can just learn about those services what are the services they have and then after their best practices so like suppose somebody who is running their workload in a windows machine right locally or in their own premises and they want same kind of offering in cloud and they just come to you and ask you that hey i have my application running in windows machine how i can run the same application inside cloud then you should be able to answer that hey inside cloud a cloud we have one offering called virtual machine instance you can just go and create one virtual machine and thus go and uh, deploy the same application you can able to run the same kind of application inside okay so in this way just learn about each and every service uh, you don't need to focus on large number of services because every cloud provider is having more than 50 services inside it you can just do one thing you can just learn about the commonly uh use services like virtual machine instance kubernetes engine cloud sql instance so these are very commonly used services so you can leverage you can just learn about their best practices and you are good and inside course uh, like exam also you will get these common services more okay what are there sir can you suggest which courses on coursera or any other learning platforms like google digital so basically google digital garage is uh, is their own like is a different domain we can say uh, other than cloud because for the cloud specific we already have google cloud skill boost platform also we have coursera just search for uh, google cloud in the coursera page you will get variety of questions prepared by uh, googlers those are very structured you can just follow honestly and you are good to go uh okay how can we get internship in google cloud so basically uh, rajan there are lots of opportunities comes every year related to google cloud uh, one of the job profile i know that is strat strategic cloud engineer okay so you can just see the um, like career page of google cloud you will get this particular opportunity and just see the description page and uh, learn about those things and you are good to go and uh, meanwhile i'm just sharing that link hold on and one more thing i just wanted to convey you guys like it's not like getting any opportunity okay i highly suggest whatever you like okay uh, whatever domain you have there are variety of domains like machine learning cloud right software engineering so first you should know that in which particular domain i am interested okay and then after prepare for the different roles present in that particular domain it's not like sometime what happens uh, people are like i am interested in cloud and uh, they just apply blindly for different different organizations and then after whenever they get into the organization uh, they realizes that this is not something which i expected right i am i am doing a different thing right inside the organization so whenever you apply for any domain just see the description part roles and responsibilities so that you should be aware of like uh, these are the things you will do after getting into the organization don't apply blindly okay 
otherwise it's more like it's a headache thing <laughs> you get into any organization and uh, you are not happy with that particular role okay so just make sure you are not uh, doing such things okay now next question sir can be internship as a wsd in google cloud so basically google cloud is also one of the product right so you can apply for uh, their software engineering roles and uh, i'm not sure like how they are maintaining uh, specifically for the google cloud internally but most of the software engineers inside google are working on different different domains and they are different different products it's not specific to google cloud uh, you, you will get an opportunity to work on different domains if you will select that for us to be or as b okay gsoc yeah gsoc is very good opportunity uh, which good platform we can say so if you are interested in open source go for it i highly suggest you will also get some uh, good level of pay also you will get a uh, real world uh, experience in different different domains so if you are interested in open source i highly suggest go for gsoc okay this is very good platform in which uh, lots of open source projects participate in this particular program and you will get in depth knowledge and you will get a mentor um, for that particular organization so this is very uh, good opportunity you will also learn that how a specific organization works how you can maintain your code how any organization pushes their code to the production and uh, maybe you will get an opportunity to contribute majorly in some of the open source project which is widely used so suppose there are kubernetes right kubernetes used widely and in the current era everyone is like we should use micro service based architecture so if you uh, get a chance uh, to work on kubernetes using gsoc you will contribute to that particular project and most probably in next release your contribution uh will be used by lakhs of people right so this is a very good opportunity also it will give you opportunity to expand your network you will uh, you will get a chance to connect with people who are uh, like minded who are very talented from all around the world so maybe if you showcase your skill set via these programs in a very uh, wider way right then it's uh, it will be very good chance for you to get an opportunity for in in the future okay hmm thanks sir for the anything else uh thank you sir for the informative session but we have some questions from different channels i guess we can cover some those questions okay yep okay so uh, dhananjay is asking can we apply for internship if we have completed our digital cloud certification cloud digital leader certification so basically dhananjay you can apply for any uh, you can apply for organizations who are uh, not more interested in uh, certification but having it it's a good plus point but if you are skilled in that particular learning you are good to go just make sure that you will have some good level of projects in your resume uh, you will be shortlisted most probably so uh, the next question is how we can start learning cloud in 2024 from scratch from scratch i highly suggest i just pasted one youtube channel a channel uh, one video link i highly suggest go with if you are in a, like sometime what happens when i started learning about cloud right i face lots of issue related to accent so whenever we learn something from the foreigner youtubers or someone right, there are some understanding issues uh, not just youtubers uh, from our official courses as well so at that particular point of time i have to watch that particular video two times three times so what uh, we have done we have created a, a google cloud training course in hindi which you can follow right 
so that you will get a full understanding at least the basic ones and then after you can uh, start your career in this particular domain as a bootstrapping course we can say so i highly suggest just go through it if you are interested in learning uh, google cloud and its relevant technology in hindi okay so first thing is that just follow that particular course i am not saying just follow this one uh, there are variety of uh, courses available so whatever you like just go through it learn about the basics first and then after whatever courses we have mentioned uh, from the course era you can just follow that particular uh, course you will get a full understanding that how cloud works how different services it has and how to leverage those services in different platforms just create a complex project which which would be some integration of different different services and the supply for different opportunities and you are good to go and once you get into the organization i think <laughs> uh you will learn the best practices things how it works and how organization works so one the only thing is getting into the organization once you get into the organization there is no <laughs> what we can say no blocker or something you have to learn the things you have to implement it okay so okay. the next question is uh, what are the scope of iot and cyber security cyber security is uh, like is is something which i i feel it will be booming okay currently also there are lots of things in the organization people are more concerned about their data right and the way we are utilizing cloud and its relevant technologies so more organization are getting into the cloud field so if you have your own laptop right and inside laptop your data is like very secure we can say if there is no connectivity but if your resources are present in a remote location and you are accessing it via internet or something else right so there are lots of possibilities comes into the picture uh, which will cause security threats right and in this particular thing every organization is more concerned about security so they are hiring more people who can look for this particular domain so most probably cyber security is going to boom in future and currently also it is booming this not like uh people are not hiring uh cyber security folks so they are in for every organization there are variety of roles in this particular domain which you can just uh track for an specific organization and you are good to okay so the next question is sir i am a cyber security engineer how i can join mm -hmm. google cloud with it so basically uh, there is one uh like certification path uh, google cloud security engineer google cloud certified security engineer there is a specific path so you uh, you can just follow that particular path as you are already experienced so there is no need to learn about the basic thing you just have to map whatever you have learned whatever understandings you have with the things present in the cloud because ultimately the basic fundamental will be the same because whatever things we do in the on prem right that particular thing is now virtualized we are utilizing these services using some kind of consoles so you just need to map the things and you are good to go so i highly suggest if you are experienced one just see the relevant uh, certification path just follow that path you are good to go and for oh. more information uh, i'm just pasting a link just follow that Let me just paste it. I'm sharing my another screen to see this. Okay, so this is the official page from Google Cloud certification. Okay, so if you see the View Certification page, there are variety of certifications available. so if you are already experience one just go for that particular role so if you see here this is the path for you cloud security engineer you are already experience in cloud security 
or security then you just go through it and you are good to and this particular certification path will have all the required skill set and learning resources which you can follow to understand more in this is not specific to this question if you see here there are variety of options available if you are a devops engineer in aws or azure and if you want to learn about google cloud devops then you should follow this path to learn about devops engineering in google cloud if you are a data engineer or data analyst just follow this path if you are a developer then you should follow this path so there are lots of certification path available inside the portal you just need to follow and uh, related to the resources if you follow these links right you will get the resources or official links official courses prepared by googlers which you can follow to learn more again we have a question from dhananjay he is asking to qualify for the career fair is it necessary to qualify the associate cloud exam uh if you are certified in google cloud associate cloud engineering exam then it will give you more chances to be certified because inside google uh, like from the google they have already mentioned that if you are a certified and participated in different google cloud events then and then you will get a chance to appear for google cloud career fair so it's a mandatory thing i feel so just try to get the certification learn about the basic things it's not that much hard if you are honest and uh, you can able to prepare within a 3 months or 4 months mostly okay the next question is sir the certification exams are very costly so yes i can hear them so basically certification is honestly <laughs> i get so just try to get the basic certification first and then after whenever you get into any organization there are reimbursement process so whatever you pay for any certification after you get certified uh, those uh, amount will be reimbursed okay so this is the basic thing every organization is having so what you can do just be participated in these kind of gdsc or google cloud events you will get 100% or 50% voucher for that particular certification so that you don't have to pay the entire amount you just have to uh, pay for 50% mostly and uh, it's around 3000 mostly if you get the 50% voucher and once you certified uh, most of the time these programs will give you uh, what we can say full reimbursement as well so just be participated in this program otherwise you will get a 50% voucher do the exam and with 50% you will get the ace and once you get into any organization whatever certification you do you will get a reimbursement for that amount okay so the next question is uh, what level of questions are asked from the devops tools like docker terraform in the cs actually this is all up to your resume so no one will pre- no one can able to predict that this kind of questions uh you will get uh in the interview okay so i can't able to comment on that part but i highly su- suggest whatever you have mentioned in your resume just try to stick with that and you should have a full understanding of that particular uh, skill set whatever you have mentioned in your project maybe if you if you don't know or if you don't have that much experience or uh, uh, what we can say uh, implementation knowledge about that particular technology stack but at least you should know that how it works what are the fundamentals of that particular technology stack and in this way i think most probably you can able to answer most of the questions so basics fundamental is very important okay so the next question is is it necessary to have certification to start a career in google cloud it is not necessary okay but it is a add on because what happens whenever there is a opportunity 
thousands of people apply for that particular opportunity. Okay, and from those thousand peoples, HR have to select few so that they can do some kind of interview process and select the candidate. Right? They can't able to uh, interview thousand peoples. They have to filter folks. Right? So having globally recognized certification in your resume will add more value to your profile and it will help you shortlist for that particular opportunity so it is not mandatory but it is helpful because ultimately whenever you get into any interview right or appear for any interview you have to showcase your skill set your certification will not help over there right your certification learning will help you over there. So whatever certification you do, just do it honestly and uh, you are good to go. Also, there is a, a next approach we can say. Just try to build some good level of projects and try to write it into the blogs and showcase uh, in your networking that this is what I am building. This is how, what I have built. And these are the technology stack I have utilized so that it will showcase that, yes, you know about these technologies without having certification. And after getting any opportunity or after getting into any organization, these certification will not impact your profile after some time. Because at that particular point of time, your experience will be not the certification, but as a fresher, Having a certification is an add-on. And one more thing I just wanted to highlight, don't do such activities in which you will have 10x, 14x, 15x. Okay. Everyone knows in the organization also, people knows that how uh, this kind of activity or bad practices are happening. So just try to get the basic level of certification with honestly, so that you can answerable in the interview, in front of the interview. So basic level certification is, I feel, must uh, for any fresher roles. And after you get into your organization, this is all up to you, that how much certification you want. And based on experience, based on projects in which you are working on, you can just take one by one certification. So like from last two or three years, if you are working on DevOps field in Google Cloud, just go for uh, Cloud DevOps certification so that it will be in the sync with your experience and your skills. This will answer your questions. Okay, so someone is asking, can you suggest the IoT roles in Google Cloud? So basically, I'm not sure IoT role because last year they have uh, suspended their product called Cloud IoT. So previously they had this product uh, product called Cloud IoT in which uh, using which you can able to set up the entire um, IoT stack in the cloud. But last year they have suspended this particular uh, product. So I'm not sure. Let me check. So you can always check their career path. Okay, career portal Google. Uh, most probably they will have some roles related to that. I'm not sure they have rules for India related to this particular domain, but most probably for worldwide, they have IoT roles because they are more working on this uh, quantum thing. Yeah, they have. So you can just search for the portal, career portal. You will get some IoT roles. So I'm just pasting link. You can just go through it. And in terms of opportunity, so current era is AI ML IoT era, right? So most probably will get more opportunities, but currently in Google, I'm not sure. Okay, so if someone wants to start their cloud career, right, then can you suggest the certification from which they can start? Associate cloud engineer exam is the ideal one. So I also started my journey with that particular certification only. And uh, at that particular point of time, I just uh, 
written a blog and highly suggest just go through this particular blog uh, to get an insight that how I pa- prepared for a certification and get certified. So, and I highly recommend because at my time, this uh, digital leader certification was not over there. And I just feel that this is more specific to sales folks. But as an engineer, I highly recommend prepare for associate cloud engineer exam. So this is the blog I have written at that particular point. I is preparation blog. Okay. And uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, anytime. Okay. Uh, via LinkedIn. So I am more active on LinkedIn. So feel free to uh, set up one one call or uh, ask any queries if you have via LinkedIn. Okay, let's have our last question. And the question is from Munir. I have 4.5 years of experience as technical writer. Is it okay to change the role to cloud engineer for 1.5 years and then apply for the jobs? Uh, you can so look basically, at the from chat box of this meeting. Okay, okay. Just present here. Okay. Let me check. I have 4.5 years of experience as a technical writer. Is it okay to change the role to cloud engineer for 1.5 years and apply for jobs? I have created two projects which includes most of that. Yes, anytime you can switch your, uh, what we can say, career. I saw folks from non-technical background switch to cloud and they are booming currently. So I saw one trailer, okay? who was trailer in their previous career and he switched to cloud and now he is booming. So this is possible if you are interested in this particular technology. So there is no issue and already you are a technical writer. So most probably you will have a clear idea that how it works and it will be very easier for you to switch that. So you can, if you are interested in this particular domain. Nothing else. I guess that was all the questions. Okay, now I hope that all of you have basic idea what a Google Cloud Career Fair is, what opportunities it offers, how you can prepare for the Google Cloud Career Fair. If you have any questions, you can drop it in the chat section. We, we have some time and we will answer those. And before ending the session, if someone from the admin team can send the WhatsApp group link so that the people can ask their questions. If you have any question, feel free to drop in the chat section or the comment box of the YouTube. We have one question, sir. To grab any cloud internship, what are the basic requirements or the qualifications? Like what you expect okay. from a fresher? So this is actually a good question. <laughs> okay. So basically, whenever we look for any cloud engineering role, okay, the basic thing what we want is having a good uh, fundamental skill set in any of the cloud platform. Uh, most probably in AWS or Google Cloud. And then after, uh, we will, like any organization wants some basic, uh, what we can say, basic services, basic uh, tools, uh, like uh, currently containerization is booming, right? So most of the organizations want uh, having some experience with Docker, having some experience with Kubernetes. Not experience, we can say at least the fundamental they know, right? And apart from that, current era is automation era, right? So most of the organization wants some level of understanding in any of the CI, CD and infrastructure as code uh, tools. And the most popular ones are Jenkins and Terraform. So these are the five things you should uh, aware of. First is 
very clear strong fundamental of any of the cloud platforms then the docker and kubernetes jenkins and then terraform this is very important and apart from that there are variety of tools and concepts available so if you are aware of and uh, most probably i just want that you should have some kind of a uh, good level of understanding at least basic understanding of uh, any of the programming language that is important actually because in the cloud field most probably you will get a chance to write a automation script so mostly we use python for that so you should be aware of how to use the control statements how to use, utilize different libraries how to integrate those libraries with cloud platforms so you should be aware of these things so these are the fundamentals every organization wants if you are aware of these things then we are good to go and if you have built some projects which will showcase these uh, tools and skill set then your profile will be ideal one for most of the organizations you can easily get the opportunity i guess that's all for the q and a session we have some positive feedback from the audience and people are mentioning thanks for the amazing session i hope you guys uh, have gained some knowledge from this info session and thank you thank you everyone and feel free to reach out to me anytime okay so there is no issue and from the chat box you can grab the link of career fair and if you are a fresher or in the first year second year then wait for the career fair it will be organized in the next year also till then you can prepare for the career fair also you can join the whatsapp community or the group where we post the gdsc events that we organize in the future and abhishek sir has shared his linkedin profile also so you can simply reach out to him if you have any questions in the cloud domain or if you need any type of help cool i hope this session was helpful to all of you again if you have any question feel free to ask in the whatsapp group we have shared also you can reach out to the sir from the linkedin That's all from our side for this session. I hope all of you have enjoyed. See you all in the next session and hopefully that session will also provide some useful information that you can use to upskill yourself. Right? See you all in the next session. Thank you everyone. Bye bye. Okay.